am here to tell you about extrema and also talk about increasing and decreasing intervals. I'm going to start with increasing. When we read graphs from left to right, just like we read words, we can either see if the values are increasing or decreasing. So when they are increasing, that means they're getting bigger. So I'm going to say, when reading a graph from left to right, the y values are getting bigger. And for decreasing, again, when we read the graph from left to right, the y values get smaller. Now, because we're reading the graph from left to right, the way that we write an increasing interval is using its x values. Okay? So I'm going to say use the x values when you write your answer down. And same thing for decreasing, we're going to use the x values. Another way of describing increasing and decreasing would be with regards to slope. If the slope is positive, that interval is increasing, and if it's a slope of, that is negative, it will be decreasing. I'm going to show you an example, but after we talk about the extrema. Extrema are about the extreme points in a graph. So for instance, we have maximums and we have minimums. The absolute maximum is the absolute highest point on a graph. That's pretty simple. The highest point on a graph. Sometimes there isn't a highest point on the graph, as you'll see in the example below. The absolute minimum is the absolute lowest point on a graph. And every graph doesn't have to have an absolute minimum either. Local maximums and local minimums are a little bit more strange. I'm only going to discuss one type of local maximums and minimums today, and that's when the slope changes from either positive to negative or negative to positive. So we'll have a local maximum, and I'm going to put slope in quotes. You'll see what I mean in a second. When the slope changes from positive to negative, and again, we always read a graph from left to right, and then a local minimum occurs when the slope changes from negative to positive. Let's take a look at the example below and see if we can make some sense of this. Okay, so let's try our absolute maximums and minimums first. Notice that if I read this graph from left to right, I have to start down here. This is the leftmost point I can see on the graph, but because it has an arrow, we know that there are points all the way down here. So this is the leftmost part of the graph. I'm going to trace from left to right. Notice that my pen is actually moving up. Right? From there to there, my pen is moving up. Now it's moving down. Now it's moving up, and it would keep moving up forever. Where was the highest point on this graph? Well, my pen keeps moving up, so it doesn't have an absolute maximum. I'm going to write none where it says absolute maximum. I didn't know where to start, right? There is no lowest point, so it does not have an absolute minimum either. Let's try the local maximums and minimums. If you read this graph from left to right, Again, I'm going from left to right. There are places where the slope is positive and the slope is negative, and it changes back to positive. It has a lot to do with increasing and decreasing. This part of the graph is increasing, this part of the graph is decreasing, and this part of the graph is increasing. 
where that change happens, right there and right there, we have local extrema. So this right here, because I kind of think of it as the top of this hump, that's going to be a local maximum. So I want to write the point at negative 3, 4. Next, we have a point over here. Notice that's where the slope changed from negative to positive. That is a local minimum. That point is at negative 1, 0. For increasing and decreasing, again, trace your graph from left to right. See where the pen moves up in these two portions. I'll do it again. If I trace from left to right, it moves up until I hit that point, and it moves up on this interval as well. I'm going to write both of those intervals down. The first interval starts with a negative x value. We're going to say negative infinity. Stops when we hit negative 3. Notice I used my x values to describe that. So we have negative infinity to negative 3. Stopped at that point. And there's our symbol for and for two intervals. It started increasing at negative 1 and went on forever towards x values of positive infinity. I'm oh, sorry, of positive value, so we're going towards positive infinity. So it started at negative 1 and went towards infinity. That just leaves us with the middle interval, which was decreasing. It started at negative 3 and goes down until it hits an x value of negative 1 and we're going to include those as well. So, in summary, it might be helpful to write down your maximums and minimums before writing down your increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, good luck. Make sure you try the problem on the back of your sheet.